Now, look at Ephesians chapter 4. The reason we want to grow, and by the, in some ways, it's, it's the stuff in the head that causes the body to grow. Um, in verse 12, you'll notice it says, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. So we want to grow, verse 13, until we all reach unity in the what? Faith. So we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and to become mature. So the first thing, the first reason we've got to be in the Word of God is to know more and more about Jesus. But the second thing is until we reach all unity in the faith. And I read all the commentaries and they're all the same way. That means we're preaching and teaching until we all come to unity into what we believe is the core of the Christian faith. And most of the commentaries mentioned that they believe that the core of the Christian faith, that what the Apostle Paul was referring to as the basic early creeds, and specifically the Apostles' Creed, that we all need to come to a unity in the faith that we believe in the most important aspects of the Christian faith. And I think they're right here. So number one, we are to believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. And down here, we also believe in the Holy Spirit. So there is a trinity. There are three persons in one God. And we believe Jesus Christ is the only Son, and he is our Lord. That he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. You need to understand that sometimes Christians will come to me and say, you know what, Pastor, I'm much more scientific now, so I, I don't actually really believe that virgin birth stuff. That medically can't happen. See, that's why we have to keep preaching and teaching. It's a miracle. Jesus Christ couldn't have been born of a human father because then he would have had a sinful nature and he'd be, he could not be the son of God. He couldn't be God became man. So you need to believe in the virgin birth. And so my, I'm going to keep pushing that, even though the liberal church says, we don't believe that. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. You know, that, that's foundational. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. So Jesus rose again three days later. I, I was just talking to some Christians that were like, oh, I think there's this talking spiritual. I'm like, no, Jesus physically rose from the dead, his body. In fact, it's so important you believe that, that the Apostle Paul writes that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, which is right here in the Apostles' Creed, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that's how you know you're saved. That's how you're saved. Believe Jesus is Lord, the Son of God. Believe he rose from the dead to pay for your sins, the forgiveness of sins. Then you are saved. He ascended into heaven, see at the right hand of the Father. He's going to come again. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church is talking about the universal church of all believers. The communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the of the what? The body. Look, Jesus rose bodily from the dead, and so will you. I, I, I can't believe how many Christians, oh, I don't know if I believe that. I think we just spiritually kind of go to God. or you know. that's, that's wrong. That's not scripture. That's inaccurate. We need to come together on the unity of the faith, and there it is, and life everlasting. There is a heaven that we're going to live in for all eternity. Lost and hopeless When I was at my worst It's grace that you extend